Hello everyone. In this video, we will be looking at the AWS Certified Cloud Practitioner Official Practice Questions and we'll solve them and find the answers. My name is Saurav and I am six times AWS certified. You can find me on GitHub and also on Twitter. Now let's get started with the questions and answers. So before we look into the actual sample questions, I want to show you where to get those sample questions. So if you go to this page, um, if you type this address on your browser, then you will get to the AWS Certified Cloud Practitioner um, certification page. And here you can see things like, uh, you know, the recommended knowledge to take the exam, how to prepare for the exam, exam overview, etc information but also you get the uh, exam guide and the sample questions so once you go to this page click on download the sample questions to get to the sample questions here I have the sample exam questions for the AWS certified cloud practitioner exam all right so let's look at number one why is AWS more economical than traditional data centers for applications with varying compute workloads? So there's two parts of this question that I want to highlight. One of them is economical. Why is AWS more economical? And the second part is for applications with varying compute workloads. So two parts to focus on. Let's look at option A. Amazon EC2 costs are billed on a monthly basis. That's not right. Amazon EC2 costs are built on uh, either per second or per hour basis. So we can cross out option A. Let's look at option B. Customers retain full administrative access to their Amazon EC2 instances. Yeah, so this is unrelated to you know economical problem and compute workloads. This is about access. So B also you know doesn't look like the right answer. Let's look at option C. Amazon EC2 instances can be launched on demand when needed. That means if I have a varying compute workload, I can launch an EC2 on demand. I don't have to reserve or pay for a month. You know, I can just use an EC2 for two hours and, uh, you know, shut down the EC2 or for two minutes and shut down the EC2. But, you know, I can do this on demand so that I don't have to uh, spend up uh, capital, you know, upfront capital buying servers. So C looks like the right answer to me. And let's quickly look at option D. And option D, customers can permanently run enough instances to handle peak workloads. Now, this sounds like a bad uh, practice. You don't want to permanently run enough instances to handle the peak, right? Because, you know, you're wasting a lot of resources. So D is not the right answer. And once again, option C is the right answer. All right, now let's look at number two. Which AWS service would simplify migration of a database to AWS? Option A is AWS Storage Gateway. Option B is AWS Database Migration Service. Option C is uh, Amazon EC2. Option D is Amazon AppStream 2. Now, option A, Storage Gateway is a storage service for hybrid environment. Uh, if you have a hybrid environment uh, consisting of AWS and your data center, then Storage Gateway makes it easy to access and store files uh, and move between those hybrid environments. Uh, so it's not the right answer. Option B, AWS Database Migration Service. And this is the right answer. Not because it contains the word Database Migration Service, but if we go to the Database Migration Service page, this is a real service and uh, Database Migration Service helps you migrate databases to AWS quickly and securely. So this service will, would simplify your database migration to AWS. And that's why the answer is B. Um, and obviously, you know, EC2 uh, is, is not the best option and AppStream is for streaming applications through a browser. So um, option B is the right answer. Let's look at question number three. Which AWS offering enables customers to find, buy, and immediately start using software solutions in their AWS environment? Now the key word in this question is AWS offering enabling customers to find, buy, and immediately start using software solutions in their AWS environment. 
Now let's look at the options. A, AWS Config. Uh, AWS Config is a service used to keep snapshots of configurations of your you know, S3 buckets and EC2, etc. So this is not the right answer. Uh, a, option B, AWS OpsWorks is used for configuration management of your EC2 instances. Option C, AWS SDK. So SDK is software development kit. Uh, using AWS SDK, you can talk with AWS services. You know, this is not the service that lets you buy, uh, find and buy services, softwares and deploy them. Now option D, AWS Marketplace, just like the name says, is a, a service that AWS provides it's where companies can sell and people can buy you know, software solutions and many other things and deploy them and use them. So this is the address for the AWS Marketplace. You can find, buy and deploy things. You can choose between uh, you know, many things like uh, firewalls, VPN services, uh, sometimes even AMIs. Let's say for migration, if I wanted to search any results, then, you know, Splunk Enterprise, right? Uh, a lot of companies uh, that we that you've been using are on the marketplace already. So if, if you wanted to search for something like firewall, then you get a bunch of firewall options by companies like Cisco and Trend Micro, etc. So you get the idea, right? Marketplace is a way where you can go find and buy uh, software solutions and other solutions on AWS, and you can use um, that solution to deploy things quicker, faster, and better on your AWS environment. So option D was the right answer for number three. Let's move on to number four. Which AWS networking service enables a company to create a virtual network within AWS? So you know, this is one of the fundamental things that you need to uh, know while working with AWS. And um, the service that lets you build network is Amazon Virtual Private Cloud or Amazon VPC. So I don't think we need to discuss this, um, this option because this is the networking uh, service of AWS. Let's move on to number five. Which of the following is AWS's responsibility under the AWS shared responsibility model? Before we move on to the options, let's look at what AWS shared responsibility model is. So I'm in this page. You can browse by typing this on your browser. Now the shared responsibility or shared security model is just a model which uh, lets customers see their responsibility and what AWS's responsibility is in the AWS cloud environment. So look at this uh, picture, then you can see that AWS is responsible for taking care of, uh, you know, setting up the data centers, the regions, edge locations, hardware, uh, all the wiring, of the, all the networking, uh, you know, all the security, uh, physical security um, stuff. While the customer is um, responsible for things like encrypting their data, uh, installing uh, antivirus, uh, performing uh, patches, you know, and management, identity and access management, and so on. So uh, you can read through this shared uh, responsibility model uh, I think this is a very important concept to understand for the exam. Um, please visit this link to read more about the shared responsibility model. So that was a quick recap of AWS shared responsibility model. So let's look at the full question once again. Which of the following is AWS's uh, responsibility under the AWS shared responsibility model? Option A, configuring third-party applications. That doesn't look like uh, AWS's responsibility. B, maintaining physical hardware, right? So we just talked about the physical side. You know, when we use EC2, AWS is the one maintaining the actual physical uh, devices, like S3 and all the services that we use. Uh, you know, this is possible because AWS maintains all the physical side of the things. Option B looks like the right answer, but Let's still look at option C and D really quick. Securing application access and data. Now, that 
is under the customer. Securing application access and data uh, is under the customer's responsibility. Option D, managing custom uh, AMIs, right? And that is also under customer's responsibility. So the answer for number five is option B, maintaining physical hardware. Number six, which component of AWS global infrastructure does Amazon CloudFront use to ensure low latency delivery? Option A is AWS regions. Option B is AWS edge locations. Option C is AWS availability zones. And option D is Amazon VPC. So when you think of CloudFront, you have to think about edge locations. So let's quickly look at this uh, documentation page. What is Amazon CloudFront? CloudFront is a web service that speeds up distribution of your static and dynamic web content such as HTML, CSS, and image files to your users. CloudFront delivers your content through a worldwide network of data centers called edge locations. Right? So edge locations are separate from uh, availability zones and regions. Um, so these are only related to CloudFront. So these are tiny data centers compared to you know availability zones, uh, but these are spread out across the world in many, many places so that data is uh, accessed by co local customers faster and with a better performance. I'll be putting the link for this page in the description for the video below. So check, you can check it out over there. So going back to number six, the answer for this is AWS Edge Locations, right? Which component of AWS Global Infrastructure does CloudFront use to ensure low latency delivery? And it, it is Edge Locations. So let's move on to number seven. How would a system administrator add an additional layer of login security to a user's AWS management console? So you might have used this if not in AWS with other services like Gmail or some banking softwares, right? When you log in to your account, in addition to your password, you also have to supply like a token or a, you know, a, a PIN number that is sent to you or is available uh, on an app. And if you look at the options, uh, use AWS Cloud Directory. This doesn't tell us anything about layer of security uh, option B, audit AWS IAM roles. Yeah, this doesn't help in adding any security. Uh, option C, enable multi-factor authentication. Now this is what we talked about. This will definitely add an extra layer of security immediately after you uh, apply this. So option C is the right answer. And option D was AWS CloudTrail. Right? This is uh, not used to add uh, security. So once again, option C is the right answer. Let's move on to number eight. Which service can identify the user that made the API call when an Amazon Elastic Compute Cloud instance is terminated? So I am a manager in a company and one of my employees terminate their EC2 instances or terminate an EC2 instance by mistake. When I try to find out but just by asking them, you know, no one answers, right? Everything, everyone is silent. So there is a way I can find exactly who did that. And let's do a quick demo on that. All right, so I'm here in my AWS management console and I'm gonna type in here, CloudTrail, right? CloudTrail and when you click on CloudTrail, you get to see this uh, recent events uh, window, right? And if you click on view all events, what this is doing is CloudTrail saves by default all the activities uh, and API calls that's been made on your AWS account. So anytime someone launches an EC2 or deletes an EC2 or deletes an S3 bucket, everything is recorded up to 90 days by default. And later you can store these logs in S3 or Glacier. So let's say that, you know, I wanna find that person who terminated my EC2 instance. So I'm gonna to go to the filter and I'm gonna filter by 
event name, right? And I'm going to type in terminate and terminate instances. So if I do this, then I can see that the user, you know, this user terminated an EC2 instance, right? So root is fine because root is me. But then at one point, this username with the name of Kiran, he terminated my EC2 instance. Usually, you know, root is the only one doing it. So I know this is my employee that I want to talk to now, right? So this is a basic demo of how CloudTrail works and you can do this for many other things. Like if you want to see who created an S3 bucket, you can type in event name for filter and type in bucket, you get to see create bucket. And you'll once again see all the users, the time, um, and you know the the IP address uh, from where the command was, the call was made, and a lot of other information. So this is Cloud Trail. So back to the question: Which service can identify the user that made the API call? We have established that this service is AWS Cloud Trail. Let's move on to number nine. Which service would you use to send alerts based on Amazon CloudWatch alarms? Now this is also a simple one because if you've uh, learned about AWS then you must have ran into AWS Simple Notification Service or SNS and with this service you can do things like send emails, send text messages, send HTTP messages uh, and also send messages to uh, SQSQ um, and things like that and whenever you think of alerts you should always think of this service and the service is SNS so option A is the right answer so let's move on to number 10 where can a customer find information about prohibited actions on AWS infrastructure so option A AWS trusted advisor trusted advisor uh, you know guides you on things like security, uh, performance, cost optimization. Trusted Advisor is based off of the Well Architecture Framework, right? The five pillars of the Well Architecture Framework and it guides you to you know reduce cost and things like that. So that's not the place you look for uh, what the question is asking. Option B, Identity and Access Management, IAM. And this is also not the place to find uh, about prohibited actions. Option C, billing console, you know, billing console is used for budgets and bill and, you know, looking at cost, things like that. Now, option D, AWS acceptable use policy. Now, just as the name says, acceptable use policy. So this is where you go to find what you can and can't do uh, on the AWS platform. And let's quickly try to go to the AWS acceptable use policy. And if you browse to this link, then you get to see the acceptable use policy. In here, AWS mentions what's acceptable uh, and what's not uh, while using the AWS platform. And obviously, you know, things like illegal, harmful, or offensive uh, stuff is prohibited. And you can't abuse the network. And, you know, you have to uh, ask for permission for uh, penetration testing on AWS environment and things like that are listed in here. So this is where you uh, go and find uh, the information about prohibited actions on AWS infrastructure. So option D is the right answer. So if you scroll down, you get to look at all the answers and also go to the respective documentation pages. I'll be adding a bit more reference links in the description as well. So check out the description. And I hope you had an idea on what these questions are asking and how you can solve some of the questions. If you're planning to take the exam, I wanna wish you all the best for the exam. I think it's uh, important for anyone looking to get into the cloud to be certified. Once again, good luck. And please let me know if you have any questions, comments, you can put them in the comments below. If you like our content, then you know, we have a lot more videos on YouTube and we also have some Udemy courses on various things like the AWS CLI, Lambda and KMS. So we'll put them in the description. Please check them out. 
Thanks once again. Goodbye.